Today we have Milt Stiegel connecting with us on Zoom all the way from his home in Atlanta, Georgia. Milt Stiegel was a six-time CFL All-Star. He holds five different CFL records, and he is also part of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Hall of Fame. Thanks, Milt, for joining us in today's chapel. Can we start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about who you are, where you grew up, and a little bit about your career. Okay, yes. Uh, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I'm the youngest of five kids. I uh, went to uh, you know, elementary school, high school there. Uh, then I went to college at Miami of Ohio, which is a school like an hour and a half east of Cincinnati. Uh, played football and ran track there. Uh, after I left Miami of Ohio, I went and played three years with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, after my three years with the Cincinnati Bengals, I went and played, of course, 14 years, uh, some of the best years of my life with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, right now, I'm married. Uh, I've been married for uh, almost 20 years. I have two sons, 16 and 12, Chase, and my youngest, Colin, who was actually born in Winnipeg uh, my last year. And as far as work goes now, uh, once I retired from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I went straight into working for TSN uh, on CFL on TSN. So uh, last year, of course, was the first year I didn't do it because we didn't have the season, but that's what I've been doing uh, for almost 13 years now. So how have you been keeping uh, busy this last year with COVID and the pandemic and everything out in Atlanta there? Well, I, I've been giving my wife somewhat of a break as far as dealing, you know, every day with the kids or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a lot on our plate with our kids as far as uh, activities, even with COVID, you know, they still have, have, have activities that we're trying to keep them involved in, of course, social distance wise. Uh, I've actually went back and took a couple of classes. I had some free time. So I said, hey, I have this free time. And through the NFL, they have a program where if you want to go back and work on your master's or whatever it may be, they uh, they'll pay for your school. And so I've had some free time. So I've just been doing that. And of course, uh, I try to work out as much as my as I can. That's my uh, passion, working out. So I've been doing things to keep me busy, uh, just looking forward to this upcoming season. But I've also had an opportunity to spend a lot of great time with the family that I usually miss out on because I'm traveling so much. So I've taken full advantage of that. One of my favorite Milt Stiegel memories was watching you score a 105-yard game-winning touchdown against the Edmonton Eskimos. You remember that catch, Milt? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, that that's my most memorable play in my football career, period. Not just in the CFL, uh, just period. That play right there, everything that went along with it, uh, the way the game was going back and forth, and the fact that we were able to win the game on a last-second throw, needing 100 yards to score a touchdown. I mean, I think about that play a lot. One last shot. Downfield for Stiegel. He's got it. What are some of the memories you have of your time living here in Winnipeg? And and, and more so than anything, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed my time on the football field uh, 14 years. I mean, it flew by so fast because I was having so much fun. But all my memories are the memories I had uh, outside of football, interacting with the fans. Uh, I did a lot of outreaching, going to different churches all over uh, Manitoba, going in, I remember Never, Neverville. I was like, when the heck am I going to Never, Neverville, Neverville, <laughs> Neverville, how do you pronounce it? But just going to those small towns, meeting the individuals there, getting to know them. Those are the things I remember so much about my time in Winnipeg. And that's what I miss. Like I said, don't get me wrong. I enjoy my time on the football field. But the fact that I was able to go out and, and, and interact with so many different individuals throughout Manitoba, uh, that touched my heart. They said that I had an impact on their lives. Those are the things that I miss and I remember about my time in, in Winnipeg and Manitoba. I remember seeing and hearing you speak at different church events while you were still living here in Winnipeg. You were a guy who was always open about your faith. Can you tell us a little bit about what the atmosphere was like while you were in the world of professional sports? Well, it, it, it can be a, a, what, what's a good word, a, a sketchy atmosphere being a professional athlete or being a college athlete you know people uh somewhat put uh athletes on a pedestal and once those individuals are put on their pedestal they are they're they're expected 
uh, they're expected others to treat them a certain way uh, with the way they're treated, with the, some of the perks that come along with it. And it can somewhat be a drug to a lot of individuals because once, once they stop getting that, they don't know how to adjust. They don't know how to react. And that's why you see a lot of individuals, once their professional career is over with their professional athlete, they somewhat get depressed. The divorce rate is high. Uh, there's a lot of financial problems because they don't know how to make that adjustment. So it's a very crazy world to be in. For myself, uh, I, was, I was grounded from day one because my parents made sure uh, that that wasn't going to be the person that, that I mean, that wasn't going to be what defined me. Uh, being an athlete was something I did. It wasn't who I was. And that all due to what my parents told me, the, the way they treated me. I mean, I was real good in high school. I was real good in, in, in college. But my parents were like, we don't care what you've done, what you are. You're still our son. You're still uh, we, you still have to be a good person to yourself and to other people. So that led, led me to be grounded. Even when I became a professional athlete, I was that same person. I treated everyone the same because I saw a lot of professional athletes especially when I was in the NFL, they didn't treat people the same. You know, if you didn't make the same amount of money they made, uh, if you weren't in their circle, they treated you totally different. So it, it was a little tough being around those individuals, but I found a way to keep myself grounded and made sure that I was that same person I was from day one. How did your faith help you stay grounded in those situations? And, and you know, when you are in that faith, you have to understand that when people find out that, Okay, he he's a he's a Christian or he's a believer. Yeah. They're gonna watch even more. They're gonna see. Uh, okay, we're gonna see what he's what he is. Okay, he can talk it, but can he walk it? So with me, it was all about just being a good person, you know. And, and I was never type that type of person who would who would pro- profess his face to everyone and say, "This is what you need to do. You need to be a follower. You need to live your life this way." I would just show them, and if they wanted to find out more about it. Then I would talk to him about it. But I, it, it wasn't easy. I won't sit up here and say it was easy. You know, there's temptations out there. There's things out there that are thrown at you, individuals, certain type of things that are thrown at you. And you have to be grounded. You have to stay in your word. And if you do get around some individuals who are trying to do the same things you're trying to do, you have to stay around those individuals. You can't think you can put yourself in a situation Uh, around individuals who are doing things you don't want to do and think you're not going to do those things. I mean, we are human. I'm a man. You know, I'm weak to certain things. So I always try to make sure I didn't put myself in a situation where I'm going to have to make a decision because I am human. And sometimes I may make that wrong decision. So uh, I try to stay strong. Like I said, I stay strong in my faith. I stay strong in the word. And I try to just surround myself with individuals who are trying to achieve the same type of goals I was trying to achieve. Milt, what would you say to student athletes who are currently looking at moving into playing sports at that next level? Well, the the main thing I would give them is enjoy. Enjoy your your, your college life. Uh, uh, Soak it all in. Don't take a day for granted. Uh, Try to explore uh, what's there for you as much as you can, but also understand why you're there. You're there for these four years so it can project you to the rest of your life. So take advantage of that. Be a leader. And sometimes being a leader means that you have to walk by yourself. So maybe when you see the crowd doing something that doesn't need to be done and you don't want to do or what they're doing is not going to get you to where you're going, you're going to have to go to the other direction. That's what leaders do. Leaders don't always have followers. Leaders are sometimes by yourself. I saw that a lot uh, in my college and my professional career. But you understand once you are a leader and if you are doing the right things, other will can, others will follow you as long as they see you doing the right thing. So those things right there are important. Time management important. Understand that the most important things that you have to do, you have to block off time for those things. And when it's time to do them, you do them. If you're an athlete, you know you have a certain amount of time you have to train. You have to train. The, reason, the main reason why you're there is, of course, to get your studies in. So you have to block off that time to say, okay, but these three or four hours every single day, I'm going to get my studies in. And I understand people want to go out and enjoy themselves. Moderation is key, but understand the main reasons why you're there. Before we sign off, what message would you want our students or really anybody watching this video? What message would you want them to hear today? Well, uh, a, a person is judged by uh, how he or she reacts when things aren't going well. And we've, we've all faced some adversity uh, this last year, year and a half. And the way you live your life or what you're going to be determined by the person you are is going to be how you bounce back. 
How do you bounce back from this? And I know we all face different things within this pandemic, physically, mentally. There were certain things that we all couldn't do. But now we're going to have the opportunity to bounce back. And what type of person you're going to be, what type of person you may be become is going to be determined by the way you bounce back. So adversity builds courage. We've gone through some adversity. How are you going to bounce back from the adversity is going to determine a lot of times what type of person you become. Thanks, Milt, for uh, joining us and giving some words to these uh, to these kids at the school here. Thank you for having me.